My name's Rhiannon Norton. I'm a senior sergeant at Sunshine Police Station. My name's Matt Mudy. I'm a leading senior constable at Sunshine Police Station. My colleague Matt and I decided to make this video mainly because of the impact that edge weapon crime is having not only locally for us at Sunshine, but across Victoria and the rest of the country. I'm a father of three. I have a 20 year old and a couple of teenagers who in the community this is impacting. Um, so I feel very passionate about it. We wanted to put this video together just to get people talking about it and to try and get some of that to stop. What you see on this video are real stories and real people and um, just have a watch of the video and then we'll have a discussion afterwards. Name's Ethan, I'm a fourth year chippy, about to be qualified actually. Um, my family, got mum, dad, Leroy and Lisa, and then two older sisters, Bree and Paige. Paige is the middle child and Bree is the eldest. And one lives in WA, one lives in St Kilda, and I obviously live with mum and dad still because I'm still young. And the incident of me getting stabbed um, happened at Packham KFC. I just remember one of his friends was having a laugh with us as I went to walk off. I've like walked out, like just like how your arms move when you walk. And um, he's come up behind me when, when I wasn't looking, I was looking at his friend. His friend was distracting me. Come up behind me and then that's when he stabbed me. You don't go out thinking you're about to get stabbed. It felt like a boiling hot potato peel up on your knuckle. All I can remember is just being KFC being on the ground, not being able to breathe. Felt like I was just filling up with water even though it was blood. I couldn't speak, talk, just because I had so much blood coming out of my mouth. And after that, I remember just being in the ambulance, texting all my friends, all my family that I love them and all that. And then I, cause I, th I honestly thought I was dying because it felt like I was, which I was. You hoped you never have to picture that, that, that call, that yeah. something's happened to your child. I honestly did not know, like that was the first thing I asked, I did not know if I was alive or not, like, I was like, am I dead? Like I was in tubes hanging out of my neck and my chest and my gut and my throat, had a massive like, cut down here, I had no idea. When they go for open heart surgery, they cut, basically with a grinder, cut me straight in half, through my chest, down to just under, like, a little bit below my sternum. Then they pretty much get each chest plate and rib and all that and like slowly, slowly open it up like that. And then they've got, they can look at everything inside you. And then straight away, one surgeon was working on my heart, getting that okay, because that was pretty much failing because of the, like the pinch in the aorta. And then the other ones, there's two of them, I think they said that were working on my lung and like other things around it because that had a big hole in it and that just collapsed and I had nothing. And then at the same time, another one like getting me breathing and still kept me alive through the tubes. And then another one putting more tubes in me. That just so that was like circulating the blood out of me and not just let, let me fill up pretty much slowly. I didn't want to think about him not making it. Um, when the surgeon said that they had to, you know, operate, um, we actually sat in silence. We didn't say anything to each other, which was which is Leroy and myself at all because we were trying to figure out and, you know, we didn't want to think, you know, are we going to have a son, uh, you know, when this is finished or are we going, you know, to take, take him home? Really hard, terrible, to be honest. Real, really long, long process of just rough and I'm sort of still not even getting back on my feet, to be honest with you. Just like it's sort of starting to come okay. Yeah. It's been, what, two years nearly? you think, well, how does this actually change his life ever? You know, because he's got this scar, so it's a reminder every single day. The cut on my chest is pretty much like belly button to the oh, bottom of my throat. And then the stab wound is actually what, probably 50 cent coin, a bit bigger. Um, I grew up as probably the happiest kid you'd ever be around and meet, especially with my friends. Everyone says it and now yeah, I'm just quiet. I don't want to go out, don't want to do anything, I just want to ride my bike. Just terrible mental health, honestly, like the worst. 
we might still have Ethan here, but we still could bury him because of his mental health. Um, that takes a, you know, a long time to heal, whether he actually gets over it or not. Um, it'll, you know, he's only young, he's still got a long life. You don't think it's gonna um, happen to your child. And you, um, but when it does, you, you kind of like, yeah, it just changes your whole life. Like, we'll never be the same. Uh, my name's Jerry. I oh, met my mate Ethan when we were playing footy. He introduced himself as a Tad because he comes from Tasmania. And we were having dinner at KFC at Packingham one night and he got stabbed. Just talking to his little 13 year old mates and out of nowhere he come behind and just had a knife and just stabbed him. I didn't realise he had a knife because it was dark and we were outside. All it looked like was he was throwing a hand, like punching him in the chest or something and we all just had a little laugh and no one even recognised what happened. And out of nowhere, you looked down, he just had a bit of blood coming out of his chest. He was laying on the ground and I remember his missus at the time was chasing after the little kids and I was standing there while I was still in shock what happened. And you just see nothing out of nowhere, you just see the whole shirt just red and just it was all over the ground and all over your hands because you're putting pressure on the wound and just felt helpless knowing you couldn't do anything about it. You hold a wound on the chest and one of the mates from the other guy sitting there crying in tears like didn't know what, what just happened either like he was as shocked as we were. And then I think it was yeah, about five, ten minutes or so, the ambulance has finally come over and applied pressure on the chest and it yeah, took him away and he was still all like aware of what was going on at the time so it didn't feel like it was as bad as it was at the time. Gave her a call and go, oh, he's, Matt's actually, he's been stabbed and he hasn't looked too bad because he's conscious, but Matt might, oh, I reckon he might need a few stitches. And she's like, oh, yeah, where's he, where's he going? We're like, the Alfred. And she's, her voice dropped completely because she just knew right away. She's like, no, nah, he's not going to be all right. Like, you're not going to the Alfred without having serious injuries. And the Ambo chicks is trying to calm everyone down and it's not too bad, he's going to be all right. And you get home and you find out he's going into surgery. You might not make it over the next couple of hours. It's like, oh, Jesus, what, what's just happened? And next couple of days, you're all sitting at home waiting for him to come home from the hospital. And he's in a coma for a couple of days. And for the first happened and hearing is, might not make it, you just like, I was, remember praying on my bed, just going, please just let him like kick through. And then after a couple of hours, you hear he's finally got, made it through the surgeries a lot, just in a coma, for, going to be in coma for a couple of days. And you're like, oh, well. At least he's all right at the moment, like again, positive news as it goes on and just, yeah, waiting for that first text just felt like eternity. Just not, it could have been you as well, like you just, right there next to him, you're seeing all this go down, you're like, oh, that could have been me, like, what could have stopped him from doing it to me too? He's just, we're just standing there minding our own business. My name's uh, Senior Constable Brian Allen, I'm a police officer at the Kildans Police Station. Uh, I can remember back in 2020 on the 16th of June, I uh, attended a stabbing at the Brimbank Library. There was some trouble at the at the shopping centre the day before and security had called up and said that the, the youth was there again. Um, we are talking to security in the shopping centre and the job come through for, for the stabbing. Um, we ran from where our position was about 200 metres to the, the library and as we come around the corner observed a young man on the ground. One of our other police units were at the scene at the same time and had started CPR on that young man. I jumped in, the three of us rotated through doing CPR until the ambulance arrived. It was evident that, that he was in a lot of um, trouble and um, we tried our best to keep him going. Um, ambulance arrived along with Micah and continued to do compressions, um, but you could see that it was not going to be ending well. He had a nice school blazer on. Um, my son wears the same blazer, same age. He's gone to school, finished school, gone to the shopping centre, and n n now he's not gone home. There's been an altercation and yeah, he's not going home. So eight hours beforehand, he was at home leaving, say, saying bye mum, going to school and yeah, eight hours later. We've got family on, on the scene, they're, they're traumatised. They've just seen a young man 
no, lead them. Uh, a group of kids had confronted him, chased him, and one of them decided that um, they would use the knife that they carry on them because they say it's to protect themselves to, um, yeah, to inflict the wound on him. The emergency services deal with this nearly every day. Some are around Victoria, they deal with it every day. Um, and you just look at it, it's a senseless act. Um, it, it can cost people serious injury or, or their life. Um, we have to go home to our families afterwards. No, I, I went home that night, spoke to my wife, spoke to my son. Um, yeah, and you just live with it and you think, how would I feel if I was informed that, that, that well, me, for me, my son had just been stabbed um, and he wasn't coming home with me. It, it's not something that, that any person wants to go through. I can tell you exactly my movements on that day, probably how long it took me to, to run from the shopping centre to uh, the, the young man. The amount of rotations we've done, CPR, the look on everyone's faces, the, the ambulance and the mica, um, when there was evident to them that that was going to be, it, uh, to be it, going over and telling my sergeant that, yeah, unfortunately that's, um, that's all that we can do for, for the young man. Watching the family um, and the, their reaction, realising that, that uh, the young man's not coming home tonight, that's, that's it. It, it's, it is surreal, um, and, and it does stay with you. It doesn't, it doesn't leave. You know, the average human lives to 80 to 82 years old, and he still had 60 odd years on average of, of life ahead of him, and, and cruelly taken away. Yeah, so we just need to cut the violence.